Welcome to the 2020 Survivor Perk Tier List. Before we get started, let me explain how I'll be ranking each perk. When deciding how to evaluate each perk, I knew I couldn't just pick my favorites and stick them in the highest tier. I needed to come up with a way to fairly rank all of them. So I asked the question, what makes a Survivor perk useful? After thinking about it for a while, I came up with three metrics that can be applied to all perks. These metrics are Activation Is the perk easy to activate? Versatility Does the perk have many use cases? And Power Does the perk have a strong effect? If a perk answers yes to these questions, it'll rank into a high tier. And if it answers no, it'll rank into a low tier. Speaking of tiers, here's what the tier list looks like. It's a fairly standard rate-based format, with perks that need to be sorted appearing at the bottom, and perks I'm discussing appearing to the right. I'll spend a minute or less going over each perk, then move on to the next. I may not mention every strategy or perk combination available, but I have a lot of perks to go over, and I want to keep this video as concise as possible. Feel free to leave comments below about anything I missed. So with all that being said, let's begin. Our first perk is This Is Not Happening. This makes setting great skill checks 30% easier for injured survivors. Great skill checks can have a dramatic impact on repair and heal times, so the appeal of this perk is obvious. However, it requires you to stay injured to receive its benefit, which can be risky unless you heal yourself to 99%. It also doesn't impact any other aspects of the game besides skill checks, which only apply to a few actions, and players can already score great skill checks. This perk just makes them a little easier. So while this perk is easy to activate, it comes at the cost of staying injured, it's also not very versatile, only affecting repair and healing speeds. And whether it's powerful or not depends on how lucky you are getting skill checks. So I'll be putting it in the D tier. Next up is Tenacity. This perk increases crawl speed while downed, and allows survivors to recover while crawling. Although Tenacity activates any time you get down, it's not exactly a perk you're guaranteed to get use out of, since most killers immediately pick up survivors after a chase. But if the killer doesn't pick you up, then this perk has a valuable effect of allowing you to escape the area you were down. It can also be used to crawl through the gates, the hatch, or to an ally, and combining it with perks like Unbreakable and Flip-Flop can increase its utility. Tenacity checks all the boxes for what makes a useful perk, but the fact that it's countered simply by the killer picking you up is why I'm putting it in the B tier. Up next is Technician. This perk reduces generator repair noises and grants a chance to prevent explosions. Technician sounds like a useful perk since it silences your repairs, but there are quite a few reasons why it's not. The first being that silencing your repairs doesn't really matter if the killer is across the map chasing someone else, which is almost always the case. The second is that the killer can still determine how much progress a generator has by listening to the machinery, so they'll probably patrol the generator you're working on regardless of whether you have this perk or not. And third, while preventing explosions is a useful effect, it's a coin flip whether it happens or not. And even if you prevent the explosion, you still lose progress. So while Technician is easy to activate, it's neither a versatile nor a powerful perk. So I'll be putting it in the D tier. Next up is Streetwise. This perk reduces your item consumption rate by 25%, which is a decent buff if you plan on using your item a lot during a match. It's not exactly a game-breaking effect for most items, but getting an extra heal out of a medkit is pretty valuable. However, if you wind up consuming your item or get hit by Franklin's Demise, the perk's going to be useless until you get your item back. And in some matches, you won't wind up using your item much at all, making the perk unnecessary. So while Streetwise is essentially a passive survivor buff, its only function is to extend your item's duration, and how powerful that effect is can vary based on the item you have and how much you actually wind up using it during the trial. So for these reasons, I'll be putting this perk in the C tier. Next we have Stake Out. This perk turns good skill checks into great skill checks after staying inside the killer's tear radius for 15 seconds. Stake Out really shines when you have a killer patrolling your area but they can't find you. You'll store up tokens that will help make up for the time you spend hiding. Now, staying inside the tear radius sounds like a pretty easy condition to meet, but the truth is, this can be a challenge depending on the killer you're facing. Half the killers in Dead by Daylight have a reduced tear radius, or can reduce their radius to zero using their ability. And if you're already good at hitting great skill checks, this perk won't be that useful for you. So while Stake Out provides a decent benefit, it's not always going to be easy to activate, and it's not a versatile perk because it only applies to skill checks. So with that being said, I'll be putting Stake Out in the C tier. Next up is Sprint Burst. This perk grants bonus movement speed when you begin running, 
Not only is Sprint Burst easy to activate, but it's both powerful and versatile as well. Whether you need to use it offensively for a flashlight save, defensively to make it to a pallet, or to just scramble to save a teammate, Sprint Burst can help in almost any situation. The only downside to this perk is having to manage your exhaustion meter carefully. Failing to do so will either force you to walk the entire game, or cause the perk to be on cooldown when you need it. Aside from this, Sprint Burst checks every box on what makes a perk useful, so I'll be putting it in the S tier. Next up is Spine Chill. You guys know how much I love this perk, but I'll try not to play favorites and talk about what it offers. When the killer looks in your direction, Spine Chill's icon lights up. It may seem unnecessary given that every killer has a tear radius, but that's the thing. Not all tear radii are created equal. A lot of killers have a reduced radius, and some powers and perks can even reduce that radius to zero, giving survivors no warning of a killer's approach. Spine Chill, however, can always be relied on as an early warning system. You won't always be able to hide with Spine Chill, but you'll rarely be caught off guard using it. There's no cooldown to worry about, and it's a versatile perk that offers valuable information whether you're in a chase, doing generators, or going for a hook save. The only drawbacks to this perk are false alarms, and the fact that the killer can simply look away from you to prevent this perk from triggering, but only the more experienced killers tend to do this. Given that Spine Chill checks all the boxes of what makes a useful survivor perk, I'll be putting it in the S tier. Next up is Solidarity. This perk heals you for half of the healing you deal to other survivors. While cutting your healing time in half sounds strong, there are quite a few problems with this perk. First, both you and the survivor you're healing have to be injured. Second, if a survivor is partially healed, you're not going to get as much healing back. Third, survivors often bring medkits or self-healing perks that take away chances to use Solidarity. And fourth, you have to be the one healing your ally. Because if they heal you, this perk does nothing. So while Solidarity has a strong effect, its narrow use case and numerous conditions you have to meet to activate it are why I'll be putting it in the D tier. Next up is Soul Survivor. After at least one survivor dies, this perk hides your aura from the killer within a certain radius. While there are quite a few aura revealing perks and powers, Soul Survivor won't protect you from any of them until your allies start getting killed off, which isn't really something you want to happen in the first place. And you can't know, your team may not die at all during the trial, which essentially makes Soul Survivor a wasted perk slot. Additionally, if you're going against a killer who has no aura revealing abilities, Soul Survivor becomes completely useless. So how effective this perk is really just chops down the luck. So while Soul Survivor can hide your aura from a killer, by the time the perk becomes useful, you'll probably have already lost. And the value you get out of this perk relies entirely on the killer's loadout. So for these reasons, I'll be putting it in the D tier. Our next perk is Small Game. This alert survivor is the one looking in the direction of a trapper totem. Now, this perk fulfills its niche very well. It makes finding totems and avoiding traps easy. But that's also what makes this perk lackluster, its narrow use case. If you're not going up against trapper or hag, the only thing this perk is good for is finding totems. And once you've found the killer's totems, this perk becomes non-existent. Also, it's quite possible to find totems and traps without this perk's help. And it's also possible the killer won't be using any hex perks at all, making small game completely useless. Although small game makes it easy to find traps and totems, in some trials these elements may not even come into play. So it's kind of luck based how much use you get out of it. So for these reasons, I'll be putting it in the C tier. Next up is Slippery Meat. This perk increases your chances of escaping bear traps and hooks. Not only are these benefits pretty weak, they only help you in very specific situations. If you're not facing Trapper, one half of the perk's utility is gone. And if you're on the hook, a teammate could be nearby to save you. This perk's use case is just too narrow and luck based to seriously be worth considering. So because Slippery Meat checks none of the boxes for what makes a useful perk, I'll be placing it in the D tier. Next up is Self Care. This perk allows you to heal yourself without a medkit, and reduces medkit consumption rates when using them on yourself. Being able to heal yourself without an item is a great benefit, and allows you to use other items without sacrificing your ability to heal. It also lowers your risk of getting caught out by the killer, because you won't have to run around looking for a way to heal yourself. There are some problems with self-care, however. The perk cuts your healing speed in half, making it much more likely you'll be interrupted before you can finish. And killers with nurses calling or other detection perks will have twice as long to find you. Killers with one-shot attacks will make self-care and healing in general less valuable, since they bypass the injured state. And some killers, like Legion and Plague, who can easily injure survivors, reduce the value self-care offers. So while self-care has no conditions to using it and works in most killer matchups, 
There are quite a few factors in Dead by Daylight that could make the perk less effective, or even backfire against a survivor. While it does meet the requirements of a useful perk, the potential consequences to using it seem to warrant placing it in the B tier. Up next is Saboteur. When the killer picks up a survivor, this perk reveals the auras of all nearby hooks, and lets you sabotage a hook once per minute. While old Saboteur took too long to be considered useful, new Saboteur now lets survivors break hooks in 2.5 seconds, giving the perk real potential to save a teammate's life. However, because hooks respawn in half a minute, saving an ally requires you to break the hook while the killer is carrying them, so you'll need to adjust your playstyle and use the perk effectively. And even if you break the hook, it's entirely possible the killer will find another hook or drop your ally before they wiggle out. And things like basement hooks, agitation, and iron grasp will render Saboteur useless. So while this perk can save your allies, there are quite a few ways it can be countered. It also demands a certain playstyle to be effective. I do see more potential in rework Saboteur for getting saves, however, so I'll be putting it in the B tier. Our next perk is Resilience. This perk grants a 9% buff to action speed while injured. While 9% may not seem like much, the numbers add up through the course of the game. Resilience applies almost every action, including bolting speed, so it could help you in a chase. However, similar to the perk this is not happening, you'll need to stay injured to receive as a benefit. You can mitigate the risk by healing yourself to almost full health, but you'll need either self-care or a medkit. While resilience is easy to activate and grants a decent buff, staying injured is a risky requirement. You can lower the risk using the tactic I mentioned earlier, so if that's how the survivor is using this perk, I place it in the B tier. Otherwise, it's going in the C tier. Our next perk is Quick and Quiet. This allows you to perform rushed actions without making a sound. It's a versatile perk that makes both jukes and mind games easier since the healer can't hear what you're doing. It synergizes well with perks like Head On and Dance With Me, letting you surprise the killer with a stun or leaving no trail for them to follow. However, silencing your actions won't help much if the killer has line of sight on you, and scratch marks that stop outside of a locker make it pretty obvious you jumped in there. So depending on your situation, the perk can range from being useful to useless. It can definitely help make losing the killer easier though, so I'll put it in the B tier. Up next is Prove Thyself. This perk increases repair speed by 10% for each survivor working on the same generator. It's a significant buff that helps you complete your main objective faster. However, the condition to be at the same generator at the same time as an ally isn't always easy to meet. Oftentimes, you'll have one survivor on the hook, one being chased, and one going for a rescue, leaving just one survivor to repair generators. And as more survivors are killed, this perk becomes harder to activate. So while Prove Thyself offers a powerful buff, it's not a versatile perk, and its condition can be hard to meet. So I'll be putting it in the C tier. Next up is Premonition. When the killer is within 36 meters, and within your field of view, this perk gives you a warning. It's a pretty powerful effect that not only tells you the killer is approaching, but from which direction as well, allowing you to pick the best hiding spot. However, the problems with this perk are its long cooldowns and false positives. Unlike Spine Chill, which has no cooldown, when Premonition gets triggered, you'll have to wait a while before it becomes available again. And even if the perk does trigger, it doesn't always mean the killer's headed your way. Additionally, Having to micromanage your camera so the perk doesn't activate can deprive you of information about your surroundings, and is pretty annoying to worry about in general. So while Premonition has a powerful effect, its versatility and power are diminished by its long cooldown and accidental activations. So for these reasons, I'll be putting this perk in the C tier. Our next perk is Poised. Every time a generator is completed, this perk hides your scratch marks from the killer. It's a powerful effect that can make escaping chases easy. The problem with this perk though is how luck based it is. You aren't going to know when each generator will be completed, which can cause this perk to activate at times you don't need it. And even if your scratch marks vanish, killers can still use line of sight, blood, footsteps, and grunts of pain to find you. So while poised has a powerful effect, it requires generators to pop at just the right time to be useful. It's also not very versatile since you don't have much control over when it activates. So for these reasons, I'll be putting it in the C tier. This next perk looks valuable. This perk reveals the auras of chests and dropped items, and increases the chances of finding better quality items. It's a nice pick if you're entering a trial empty-handed, or with an item of poor quality. However, it's entirely luck-based if the item you get is what you need. And once all the chests have been looted, the only function this perk has left is revealing the auras of dropped items. While Plunderous Instinct is easy to activate, 
It has a narrow use case, and its power is completely luck-based. So I'll be placing it in the C tier. Up next is Pharmacy. This perk makes looting chests faster and quieter, and guarantees you'll find an emergency medkit on your first search. The nice thing about this perk is how reliable it is. If you're injured, you can always loot the nearest chest and patch yourself up. You can also save a lot of time for your team if you search the chest for them and leave the items inside. However, Pharmacy does suffer some of the same problems as Plunderer's Instinct. Once all the chests have been looted, this perk has nothing else to offer. And after looting your first chest, whatever you get after that is just to roll the dice. Although Pharmacy is reliable and easy to activate, its only use case is looting chests. So it comes across as a C tier perk to me. Up next is Open Handed. This increases all survivors' aura reading ranges by 8 meters. It's a decent buff when combined with certain perks or items. Pair it with the Blood Amber to let you see the killer coming a mile away. Or equip Kindred or Bond to level up your situational awareness. These are probably the most powerful ways to use Open Handed, however, as most of the other aura reveal perks in the game have a large enough radius. And if your teammates aren't using any perks that benefit from Open Handed, a lot of the perks' power will end up being wasted. So while Open Handed is essentially a passive buff, it's not the most versatile perk, since only a few combinations exist that are really worth pairing with it. And how powerful it is depends on what perks you and your team are using. So for these reasons, I'll be putting it in the C tier. Next up is Object of Obsession. This perk reveals your aura to the killer, and the killer's aura to you, whenever you look in their direction. If you want to be the distraction for your team, this perk will paint a bullseye on your back the size of Tiger Stadium. More than just a way to get the killer's attention, this perk can also tell you when it's safe to sneak a generator, go for a hook save, or pick the right exit gate. However, equipping this perk can also backfire, because killers who can become undetectable also become immune to aura reading perks. This means the killer will see you, but you won't see them, basically giving them wall hacks. Although this is a sometimes fatal flaw, Object does meet the requirements of a useful perk. But the fact that it can completely ruin your matches against some killers is why I'll be putting it in the B tier. Up next is No One Left Behind. This perk greatly increases healing on hooking speeds after your team opens at least one gate. It also allows you to see the auras of all survivors. While there are matches where players will get hooked after the gates are powered, oftentimes the match will already be won by the killer before this happens. And even if the gates do get open, there may not be anyone left behind. You or your teammates could be dead. So for these reasons, I'll be placing it in the D tier. Our next perk is No Mither. This inflicts the broken status effect on you for the entirety of the trial, but hides your blood trails, lowers the volume of grunts of pain, and lets you recover from the dying state by yourself. While this perk may seem like just a voluntary handicap, there are some interesting strategies and perk combinations that can make it somewhat viable. Resilience, This Is Not Happening, and Dead Hard are just a few perks that synergize well with No Mither. It's also a soft counter to killers like Plague and Legion, whose powers keep survivors injured. But don't get the wrong idea. No Mither isn't some sleeper overpowered perk. Having one hit point is a huge disadvantage, and stealth killers like Wraith, Pig, and Ghostface will eat No Mither players for breakfast. So while No Mither has some powerful effects, the price of being injured all game almost always outweighs the benefits. So I'll be putting it in the D tier. Next up is Metal of Man. This perk allows you to ignore damage that would normally down you after taking three protection hits. While being able to take an extra hit sounds game breaking, there are quite a few conditions you have to meet to get this perk to activate. First, you can't just get hit by the killer to gain stacks. You have to take protection hits which are defined as hits taken while the killer is carrying an ally, or hits taken with an injured ally within 10 meters. Those are pretty strict conditions to get your perk charged up, and will require a very altruistic playstyle that usually isn't optimal. There is also the penalty of the killer being able to see your aura after using it, which seems like an unnecessary punishment given how much you have to do to activate it. So while Metal of Man's effect is powerful, taking three protection hits is pretty challenging, and you even get punished for using it. So I'll be putting it in the D tier. Up next is Lucky Break. This perk removes your blood trails for up to three minutes while injured. It's a useful perk on some maps like the game and Hawkins Lab, since blood trails are easy to see. But on most maps, grass patches and dark environments can already hide blood trails very well. There are also many other tracking tools available that can make blood irrelevant. So although hiding blood trails can help you escape a killer, it's not the most important tracking tool for them to find you. 
And there are some killers, like Legion and Plague, who can make the perk less useful by keeping you injured for long periods of time. By itself, Lucky Break is probably a D-tier perk, but if you combine it with other stealth perks, then it can be a C-tier perk. Our next perk is Lithe. This grants you a speed boost after fast vaulting a window or pallet. It's a powerful effect for helping evade the killer, and it has an easy condition to meet. Whether you want to get an extra loop out of a chase, perform a line of sight juke, or escape getting trapped in an unsafe pallet, Lithe can give you the boost you need. The only requirement is that you have to have a window or pallet nearby, which you'll find plenty of on most maps. However, as the killer breaks more pallets, it'll become a bit harder to activate. But Lithe meets all the requirements of a useful perk, so I'll be putting it in the S tier. Up next is Lightweight. This perk lowers the duration of your scratch marks by 3 seconds. Scratch marks are the main tools killers use to find survivors, and this is one of the only perks in the game that makes them harder to follow. Lightweight makes it safer for survivors to run instead of walk around the map, and it covers your trail faster if you lose a killer during a chase. Players should not have unreasonable expectations for this perk however. Scratch marks will still be easy to follow if you're in a chase, but if you lose a killer during a chase, this perk makes it more likely you'll stay lost. While Lightweight meets all the requirements of a useful perk, its effect isn't that powerful, so I'll be placing it in the B tier. Next up is Distortion. Up to 3 times per match, this perk will hide your aura for 10 seconds when it would otherwise be revealed. It also hides your scratch marks for the duration. It's a useful pick against certain perks, like Barbecue and Chili, I'm All Ears, and Nurse's Calling. It can also give you a clue as to which perks the killer has equipped, which can definitely help you survive. However, killer add-ons that let them persistently see survivor auras will consume this perk's tokens quickly. And if the killer doesn't have any aura revealing abilities, then distortion becomes completely useless. It also doesn't help against detection perks like Infectious Fright or Tinkerer, which don't need to reveal your aura to help the killer find you. So while distortion offers some powerful effects, it has a limited number of times it can be used per match, and its effectiveness is kind of luck-based, since it relies on the killer's perks and add-ons. But aura reveal perks are pretty popular, so I don't think you have to worry about that too much. Overall, I'd say it offers enough utility to warrant placing it in the B tier. Our next perk is Leader. This increases nearby allies' non-generator repair action speeds by 25%. It sounds like a powerful buff on paper, but it only affects your teammates, and has two big conditions attached to it. You need to be near an ally, and they need to be performing an action that isn't repairing a generator. Oftentimes, one of these conditions winds up being false making the perk less useful than you'd think. So while Leader's action speed buff is strong, it doesn't benefit its user, and only benefits teammates in certain situations. So for these reasons, I'll be putting it in the C tier. Up next is Kindred. This perk reveals all survivors' auras to each other when you're hooked, and the killer's aura when they're within 16 meters. These auras are also revealed to you when a teammate gets hooked. Kindred is a fantastic perk for solo play because it gives you all the information you can get if you have voice communication. You can see if the killer is camping the hook, if an ally is going for a save, or if you need to go for a save. Kindred also makes it far more likely you'll get unhooked, since teammates will be able to tell when the killer is near you. The only downside to this perk is that it does nothing until someone gets hooked, but that can happen up to 12 times per match, and can last quite a while. Since Kindred meets all the requirements of a useful perk, I'll be putting it in the S tier. Next up is Iron Will. This perk silences your grunts of pain while injured. Depriving the killer of one of the most important tracking tools makes it much easier to lose them during a chase, and stay hidden outside of chases. It also makes killers like Nurse and Spirit much easier to deal with. It also makes healing up less of a priority, allowing you to focus more on your objectives. This perk does have its drawbacks though, it does nothing until you're injured. And isn't that useful against one-shot killers, because they don't let you stay injured. But the amount of survivability this perk offers more than makes up for these shortcomings. Given how greatly Iron Will improves your odds of surviving, I'll be putting it in the S tier. Our next perk is Hope. This grants 7% extra movement speed for 2 minutes after all 5 generators have been completed. It's quite a powerful effect, considering most killers rely on their higher movement speed to catch you. The problem, however, is that Hope does nothing until the end of the trial. Most of the chases that were going to happen during a match happen before this perk activates, and unlike Adrenaline, if the killer is just a second away from catching you, you're going to need more than just Hope to make it to the next pallet or window. So while Hope's speed boost is definitely powerful, it activates too late into the game to really be useful. So I'll be putting it in the D tier. Up next is Head On. 
This perk allows you to stun a nearby killer after being inside a locker for 3 seconds. It's a great pick if you like using lockers a lot, as it lowers the risk of getting pulled out. It also combines well with perks like Dance With Me and Quick and Quiet, allowing you to vanish mid-chase or hit the kill with a stun. Head-on does have some problems though. The short time it takes to charge up does make it possible for the killer to grab you before you can use it, and you can also miss your stun if your timing is off. And if the killer has line of sight on you, jumping inside a locker mid-chase isn't really an option. So while head-on has a powerful effect, it's pretty situational, and without the help of quick and quiet, it loses some of its versatility. But it's still a solid pick on its own, so I'll rank it as a B-tier perk. Next up is Flip Flop. This perk converts half of your recovery progress into wiggle progress. While Flip Flop can save your life if the killer decides to slug you, oftentimes they just immediately pick you up. In higher rank matches, however, killers do tend to slug more often, so it can wind up saving you now and then. You can also combine it with perks like Unbreakable and Tenacity to give yourself a better chance of building up your recovery bar. But whether you're able to wiggle out or not, really just chops down to how far away you are from the hook and how quickly the killer picks you up. While Flip Flop can save you from getting hooked, it's pretty situational. But I think these situations happen often enough to warrant ranking it as a C tier perk. Our next perk is Empathy. This allows you to see the auras of injured allies at any distance. Knowing exactly where your teammates are when they're injured grants a lot of situational awareness and helps you make better decisions and stay out of trouble. Empathy also allows you to help your allies get back into the game faster. There are a few downsides to Empathy though. If everyone's healthy, this perk does nothing, and one-shot killers will make Empathy less valuable since survivors won't spend as much time being injured. On the other hand, Killers like Plague and Legion, who tend to keep players injured for a long time, will make Empathy more valuable. Despite Empathy's minor drawbacks, it meets all the requirements of a useful perk, so I'll be putting it in the A tier. Up next is Diversion. This perk creates a loud noise notification 20 meters away from you after spending 45 seconds near the killer. This can give the killer a false lead to follow, or divert their attention so you can escape. While it can allow you to throw off the killer, there are some problems with this perk. Activating Diversion isn't always possible, because some killers like Raven Ghostface reduce their terror radius to zero, and many killers like Myers Ag and Deathslinger have a smaller radius, making Diversion harder to activate. Additionally, killers are often busy chasing survivors or patrolling generators, and may just ignore the pebble altogether. So while Diversion has a decent effect, it takes a long time to charge, and it will take even longer to charge against certain killers. So I'll be putting it in the C tier. Let's bring a magnifying glass to Detective's Hunch. After completing a generator, this perk reveals the auras of all chest totems and generators within 64 meters for 10 seconds. The biggest selling point of this perk is how it makes finding hex totems easy. Simply complete a generator, and the majority of the map's totems will be revealed. The perk is also quite handy on maps where generators are harder to find, like the game and treatment theater. However, players with adequate map awareness and memorization won't find the information this perk offers as valuable. And once the killer's totems have been cleansed, much of the perk's utility is gone. So while Detective's Hunch makes it easier to find things, its benefits won't be as useful to more experienced players. So I'll be putting it in the C tier. Our next perk is Deliverance. This allows you to unhook yourself after unhooking an ally. It's a pretty easy condition to meet for a game-changing benefit. Unhooking yourself saves a lot of time for your teammates, and it can let you escape in situations where none of them are available. There are a few drawbacks to this perk, however, if you're the first survivor to get hooked, then Deliverance becomes completely useless, since you can only unhook yourself on your first hook. It's also possible an ally may unhook your teammate before you do, making the perk harder to activate, and you'll suffer from a broken satisfaction for a while after being unhooked, leaving you vulnerable to getting one-shotted. But the ability to rescue yourself from a hook greatly outweighs the perk's drawbacks, so I'll be placing it in the A tier. Up next is Deja Vu. This perk highlights the auras of the three generators closest to each other when the match begins and whenever a generator is completed. It's a nice perk for helping prioritize your generators, and it can be helpful on maps where generators are hard to find. However, simply memorizing where each generator is can do the same thing this perk offers you. So aside from revealing the locations of generators you don't know about, the benefit it offers is kind of weak. So while Deja Vu is easy to activate, the benefit it offers is really unnecessary unless you're on a map with short lines of sight so I'll be ranking it as a D tier perk. Now let's take a stab <laughs> at Decisive Strike. After being unhooked, if the killer tries to hook you again too soon, you'll stun them for 5 seconds, 
This gives players a chance to get away if the killer is telling them. Decisive Strike is a very important perk for the health of the game. If the killer doesn't see an obsession icon on any of the survivors, they'll know nobody has D-Strike, and will be free to tell and camp everyone. Decisive Strike, and maybe Borrow Time, are the survivors' only defenses against this type of behavior. That being said, if the killer is not targeting you straight off the hook, then all you have is an empty perk slot. But you'll never know when you'll get a killer like that, so this perk is your insurance policy. While D-Strike may be completely unnecessary in some trials, its ability to let you escape telling situations is perhaps the strongest in the game. So I'll be ranking it in the A tier. Our next perk is Dead Hard. This allows injured survivors to perform a dash that makes them invincible for a split second. When used properly, Dead Hard essentially gives you an extra hit point and allows you to make riskier and more unexpected plays during chases. Apart from just avoiding melee attacks, you can also use Dead Hard to avoid taking damage from hatchets, chainsaws, and bear traps, truly making it a versatile perk. It does have some counters, however. Killers can run to point blank range before attacking you, making it very difficult to predict when they'll swing, and one shot attacks will completely ignore the injured state, making it impossible to use Dead Hard. But even with these counters, Dead Hard meets every requirement of a useful perk, so I'll be putting it in the S tier. Next up is Dark Sense. This perk grants you vision of the killer for 5 seconds every time a generator is completed. When the last gen pops, this duration is doubled. While being able to see the killer sounds like a strong benefit, the reality is that it's totally luck based if that information will be useful to you. You could be in a chase and not need to know where the killer is because they're right behind you. Or it could activate when a killer is patrolling your area and allow you to escape. In addition to it being luck based, stealth killers can become immune to aura reading perks, so Dark Sense could wind up being less effective in some matchups. The biggest selling point of this perk is the 10 second aura reveal when the gates are powered. The length of this reveal almost guarantees you'll pick the right gate to open, making the end game a lot easier. So while Dark Sense is easy to activate, it's really only powerful when the last generator pops. So I'll be putting it in the C tier. Let's get down with Dance With Me. This perk hides your scratch marks for 3 seconds after vaulting a window or leaving a locker. It's a powerful effect that can throw the killer off your trail. A great thing about this perk is that it has a separate cooldown from exhaustion perks, so you can combine it with perks like Lie Their Head On to make getaways even easier. However, hiding scratch marks won't help much if the killer has a line of sight on you. You'll need to be in a building or have cover nearby to lose the killer with this perk, so it's kind of situational. Despite requiring the survivor to break a line of sight to be effective, Dance With Me meets all the requirements of a useful perk, so I'll be putting it in the A tier. Our next perk is Calm Spirit. This prevents you from screaming and disturbing crows. While some killers like Doctor and Clown have powers that make survivors scream, it's a mechanic that doesn't really come into play that often. And while crows can give away your position, they're one of the less important tools killers use to find survivors. So unless the killer is Doctor or Clown, most of this perk's potential will be wasted. Given how small the odds are of getting use out of this perk, I'll be putting it in the D tier. Let's strap in for- Buckle up! This perk lets you see the recovery progress of survivors in the dying state, and reveals the killer's aura to you and any survivor you heal to the injured state for 6 seconds. It's a nice quality of life improvement being able to tell if a survivor is fully recovered, but not really a necessary one. Most of the time, you can just wait 30 seconds and your teammate will be fully recovered. And while the aura reveal is nice, a lot of the time you don't really need it, because you typically only rescue your allies when the killer is busy doing something else. Buckle up is also highly dependent on the killer's behavior the perk only coming into play when they slug your teammates. So given how lackluster and unnecessary this perk's benefits are, I'll be putting it in the D tier. Next up is Breakout. While you're an ally being carried by the killer, this perk will allow them to wheel out faster. I think the concept of this perk is hilarious. Normally, the killer is the one chasing you, but this perk is going to have you chasing them. Not only does it take away time from generators, but Breakout only shaves about 3 seconds off your ally's wiggle timer, which still leaves the killer 13 seconds to hook them. Sometimes you can pull off a save if you take a hit for them, but usually it's a wasted effort. So while Breakout has potential to save your allies, it takes away from repair time, and isn't very reliable. So I'll be putting it in the D tier. Our next perk is Breakdown. After being unhooked, this breaks the hook you're on for 3 minutes, and reveals the killer to you for 6 seconds. While breaking a hook can make it more difficult for the killer to hook you, there's almost always another hook nearby the killer can put you on. So unless you combine this perk with Saboteur or a Toolbox, it's probably not going to be enough to save you. And the aura reveal this perk offers usually isn't that helpful, 
since you can tell where the killer is by paying attention to your allies' ores while you're on hook. So while Breakdown has some potential to save you from getting hooked again, by itself, it usually isn't enough to stop the killer. So I'll be putting it in the D tier. Up next is Botany Knowledge. This perk increases healing speed and increases how long medkits last. It's a simple and straightforward buff to an action that happens in every game. It helps both you and your team get back on your feet faster and can allow lower tier medkits to heal you fully in extra time. While there are no real drawbacks to using this perk, there are some situations that will make it less effective. Matchups against one-shot killers will reduce the chances you get to use botany knowledge, and if the killer can inflict a deep wounds or broken stats effect, this perk's healing benefits won't be as useful. In most cases, however, botany knowledge offers a strong and easy-to-use action speed buff that stays relevant in almost every matchup, so I'll be putting it in the A tier. Next up is Borrowed Time. This perk grants survivors you unhook an extra hit if you're within the killer's tear radius. It's without a doubt one of the most powerful effects in the game, allowing allies to escape basements, camping, and tunneling killers. It can also be used to take a hit for the player who saved the hook survivor. There are some problems with borrowed time, however. Killers who can reduce their tear radius to zero can stop the perk from activating, and killers with a small tear radius can still stay close to the hook without triggering the perk. With that being said, borrowed time is one of the most important perks in the game to give unhooked survivors a fair chance of getting away. And while it may not be easy to activate against some killers, it works in most matchups, so I'll be putting this perk in the S tier. Our next perk is Bond. This reveals the auras of all survivors within 32 meters. The value of knowing where your allies are and what they're doing should not be underestimated. Bond can tell you where to go for healing, where to find generators, and where not to go if someone's being chased. It helps you manage your time more efficiently, make more informed plays, and cooperate with your team. The only drawbacks to Bond are that the perk is weaker as more survivors get killed off, and being hit with a blindness status effect will disable your ability to see auras. Even with these flaws, Bond is always a relevant pick no matter what kill you're facing, and the information it offers will help you in countless situations. So I'll be putting this perk in the S tier. Next up is Boil Over. This increases the effects of wiggling while being carried, and disables the kill's ability to see the auras of nearby hooks. While Boil Over does make it slightly more difficult to carry a player to a hook, it's almost never enough to stop the killer from hooking you. Any killers can simply memorize where the hooks are, to count on the perks or a blindness effect. Boil Over's benefits are underwhelming, and are only helpful in very specific situations, so I'll be putting it in the D tier. Up next is Balance Landing. This perk silences the sound you make when falling from a ledge, reduces the stagger duration, and grants a speed boost upon landing. It's a powerful effect that can open up new ways to loop the killer, or make a sneaky escape since they won't hear you when you fall. There's really only one drawback to using Balance Landing, and that's how activating it can be challenging on some maps. But I wouldn't worry about this too much, because almost every map has at least one drop you can use. Balance Landing meets all the requirements of a useful perk, so I'll be putting it in the S tier. Next up is Autodidact. This perk causes skill checks you hit while healing an ally to increase the amount of progression they grant by 15% up to a max of 50%. When fully stacked, Autodidact has potential to heal allies in a matter of seconds, but the key word here is potential. You'll probably have to heal 3 allies before you get 5 stacks, and the perk only grants a bonus if you get a skill check. Sometimes you'll wind up fully healing an ally without getting a single one, and the bonus you get from this perk only applies to healing teammates, not yourself. You can equip Solidarity to get some personal benefit though. So while Autodidact grants a powerful buff to healing speed, activating it is completely luck-based, and it demands both time investment and an altruistic playstyle to get the most out of it. So for these reasons, I'll be putting it in the C tier. Our next perk is Any Means Necessary. This allows you to reset a drop pallet to its upright position once every two minutes. While being able to reset a pallet sounds powerful, let me explain why in practice it's not. First, killers tend to only ignore unsaved pallets, which means all the pallets that actually matter are going to be broken. Secondly, this perk has a really long cooldown, which means you only get to use it a few times per match. Thirdly, unless you have windows of opportunity equipped, you're not going to know which pallets you can reset. And finally, there are quite a few killers in the game who can use their power to play around pallets, so resetting them won't be that useful. This perk comes across as lackluster in almost every aspect, so I'll be putting it in the D tier. Our next perk is Alert. This perk reveals the killer's aura anytime they break a pallet or a generator. The value you get out of Alert somewhat depends on the kill you're facing. For example, if you're going up against a nurse, don't expect this perk to activate very much, 
because she almost never breaks palettes. But if the killer is someone like Leatherface who can't ignore palettes, you'll probably see the perk light up a lot. Another weakness is that it won't reveal killers who are undetectable, but you will see the icon's cooldown go off, so it still provides some information. While Alert can help you keep tabs on the killer, activating it can be a challenge sometimes. However, with breakable walls coming soon to the game, Alert will have more scenarios where it can activate. So with that in mind, I'll be ranking it in the B tier. Next up is Aftercare. This perk reveals your aura to your allies, and their auras to you, whenever you heal or unhook them, or they heal or unhook you. It's a pretty powerful benefit, as knowing where your teammates are at all times can help you make better decisions. However, there are two problems with this perk. The first being that you have to heal or unhook an ally. While it's not a hard requirement to meet, until you meet it, this perk does nothing. And the second problem is that when you get hooked, the effects of this perk deactivate. So you'll have to heal or unhook your allies again to gain vision on them. So while Aftercare checks all the boxes of a useful perk, the fact that you have to earn its benefits, and can lose those benefits if you get hooked, is why I'm ranking it in the B tier. Our next perk is Adrenaline. This instantly heals you one health state, and grants extra movement speed when the last generator is completed. This perk can single-handedly save your life in a variety of situations, whether you're being chased, finishing a generator, or being camped on the hook. Adrenaline always has potential to make a big impact. There are two problems with this perk, however. The first being that it doesn't help you survive until the end of the trial. And the second problem is that you can't know what situation you're going to be in when the perk activates. Maybe you're in grave danger and it winds up saving you. Or maybe you're completely safe and the effects are wasted. Whatever the case, there's no denying that Adrenaline has one of the most powerful effects in the game. But the condition to activate it is one of the hardest. It's tough, but I'll put it in the A tier. Up next is Ace in the Hole. This perk guarantees that items you find in chests will come with at least one add-on. It also lets you keep any add-ons you brought into the trial. While add-ons do make items more useful, the problem is that it's completely luck-based if they're any good. Ace in the Hole also suffers the same problems as Pharmacy and Plunder's Instinct. Once all the chests are looted, this perk becomes useless. So while you can find some pretty nifty stuff with this perk, it is too luck-based to be considered powerful. So I'll be putting it in the D tier. Next up is Windows of Opportunity. This perk reveals the auras of palettes and windows within 20 meters. Normally, you'd have to explore the map and memorize where these objects are, but this perk does the work for you, saving you time and making it easy to plan your looping route in advance. It will also prevent you from running into an area where all the palettes have been used. However, the more experienced you are, the less useful this perk becomes, since you'll have memorized what most of the maps look like. So, while this perk provides useful information, the benefit it offers can be gained simply by memorizing the map layout. So I'll be putting it in the C tier. Our next perk is we're gonna live forever. This is just a blood point farming perk and doesn't provide any useful effects otherwise. So this perk is gonna live forever in the D tier. Up next is we'll make it. After unhooking an ally, this perk will increase your healing speed by 100% for 90 seconds. It's a powerful effect that helps get your allies back in the game faster, but there are some problems with it. Number one, the requirement to unhook your ally can be a challenge. Sometimes a teammate will get there before you do, while other times you'll be getting chased or completing a generator and won't be available. Problem number two, even if you unhook a player, if the killer is nearby, they may just run off and you won't get a chance to heal them. And number three, the perk doesn't offer you any personal benefits, as the healing only applies to allies. So while we'll make it offers a powerful effect, activating the perk can be hard sometimes, and it's a purely altruistic perk since it only works on allies but I think it's strong enough to warrant putting it in the B tier. If you fell asleep watching this video, this next perk is for you. Wake Up reveals the auras of the gates, lets you open them 15% faster, and reveals your aura to all allies when you do so. While the gates do take a while to open, a 15% increase will only open them 3 seconds faster, and the aura reveal this perk offers isn't really necessary, since the gates are highlighted the moment the last generator pops. You'll also be playing the majority of the match with only three perks using Wake Up, and the benefit doesn't really feel strong enough to be worth it. Wake Up just feels lacking in every category of useful perk, so I'll be putting it in the D tier. Next up is Vigil. This perk lowers your exhaustion cooldown by 20%, and also applies to nearby allies. While being able to use exhaustion perks more often is a nice benefit, the standard 40 second cooldown is usually short enough to be ready for your next chase. The perk also lets you recover faster from stats effects, but it's pretty useless, 
since most of them last until you perform a certain action, like removing a reverse mirror trap or cleansing in a fountain. So while faster exhaustion recovery is nice, that alone doesn't seem strong enough to be worth equipping it. So I'll be putting it in the D tier. Up next is Herb Innovation. This perk increases your movement speed while crouched. It's a decent benefit that can help you hide from the killer, as many of the game's obstacles are just large enough to hide a crouching survivor. So Herb Innovation lets you travel a map faster without exposing yourself. It's also one of the best counters to hag since her traps won't trigger if you're crouching. However, Herb Innovation isn't necessary in a lot of cases, as many structures and walls are tall enough to hide survivors even if they're standing up. And while it does increase your movement speed while crouched, you can encourage a bad habit of crouching everywhere when you could be running. So while Urban Evasion can help you hide from the killer, it really only helps when taking cover behind smaller obstacles. So it seems like a C tier perk to me. Our next perk is Up the Ante. This grants 3% luck to all survivors for every one of their allies who are remaining in a trial. While luck increases your chances of escaping a hooker bear trap, that's really all it does. Some players believe it also affects the odds of finding higher quality items, but this is simply not true. Up the ante has a very narrow use case, and I wouldn't put my chips on it saving you. So I'll be putting this one in the D tier. Next up is Unbreakable. This perk increases your recovery rate while in the dying state by 35%, and allows you to fully recover by yourself once per match. Being able to pick yourself up is game breaking, and can single handedly turn the tide of a trial. And the faster recovery this perk offers also increases your chances of getting revived by a teammate. However, it won't help you survive outside of scenarios where the killer slugs you, which can make it feel like an empty perk slot sometimes. So while Unbreakable is dependent on the killer's behavior, having the power to interrupt the killer's momentum and stop snowballing is why I'll be putting it in the A tier. Up next is Off the Record. After being unhooked, this perk silences your grunts of pain and hides your aura from the killer for a short time. It's kind of like having Iron Will and Distortion combined into one perk. Which sounds good because both of these perks have strong effects, but it can only trigger a maximum of 2 times per match, and that's considering you don't reach stage 2 on your first hook. There's also no guarantee you'll need the benefits off the record grants you, since you typically only get unhooked when the immediate area is safe. So while off the record has some powerful effects, they only last a limited time and won't always be necessary, so I'll be placing it in the C tier. Our next perk is Inner Strength. After cleansing a totem, Entering a locker while injured will heal you after 8 seconds. If you're looking for a way to maximize your efficiency, Inner Strength is a fantastic pick. It essentially gives you a free heal for performing an action you already would, even without this perk. Not only that, it heals you twice as fast as a normal heal while granting you the safety of a locker, making it one of the most reliable ways to patch yourself up. The only drawback to this perk is that if your teammates are cleansing totems, you won't get as many chances to activate it but Inner Strength meets all the requirements of a useful perk, so I'll be putting it in the S tier. Up next is For the People. This perk allows you to instantly heal an ally when health state, at the cost of becoming injured and broken for 90 seconds. It's a game-breaking ability that enables you to rescue teammates in situations that would normally be considered impossible. However, these situations are pretty rare to come by, as they require the killer to slug your teammates. Additionally, For the People offers no personal benefits, which means you'll be lowering your own chances of survival using it, and the broken status effect it afflicts you with can often wind up hurting you later on. So while For the People has a powerful effect, it's a situational perk that comes with a hefty cost for using it, so I'll be putting it in the B tier. Next up is Camaraderie. This perk pauses your hook timer in stage 2 when an ally comes near your hook. While having extra time on the hook can save you in some situations, there are two big problems with this perk. First, it doesn't help you survive at all until you're on your last hook. In some games, you won't get hooked more than once, effectively making the perk useless. And secondly, the perk has a very narrow use case. If a survivor is within 16 meters of you, it's only going to take them 4 seconds to reach you. So unless your hook timer is below 4 seconds, the extra time this perk gives you won't be necessary. Camaraderie fails to meet any requirement of useful perk, so I'll be placing it in the D tier. Our next perk is Better Together. This reveals the aura of the generator you're working on to all survivors within 32 meters, and reveals the auras of all your teammates for 10 seconds when one gets downed. The perk's main benefit, highlighting the generator you're working on, does more than just let your team know where a generator is. It tells them where they can go for healing, and where not to go if they're in a chase. And the secondary benefit of revealing your team's auras can help you make better decisions when someone gets down. 
The drawback to this perk is that it requires you to be on generators to activate its effects. So unless that's what you plan on doing most of the game, you'd be better off picking something else. And while the information it offers is valuable, it can overlap with popular perks like Bond, Empathy, and Aftercare. So all things considered, I'll be placing it in the C tier. Splashing in next is Red Herring. This perk creates a loud noise notification at a generator after entering a locker. It's an interesting effect that has the potential to give a killer a false lead. Just like Diversion, however, it can easily be ignored. Killers will be busy chasing other survivors or prioritizing other generators and won't react to a notification. Killers also often equip detection perks that make them less reliant on these notifications. And if an ally is working on the generator you trigger, you could wind up actually helping the killer. So while Red Herring has potential to throw off the killer, there's no guarantee it'll provide any value. So I'll be placing it in the C tier. Up next is Second Wind. After healing an ally, this perk will automatically heal you 30 seconds after being unhooked. Similar to Inner Strength, Second Wind is a great pick for going for efficiency. Instead of having to wait 16 seconds healing yourself with a medkit, you can simply run to a generator and let this perk heal you while you repair. It can also trigger while you're being chased, cleansing a totem, or doing anything really. The only drawback to this perk is that you need to fully heal an ally before you get hooked. Variables like being the first survivor found, healing a partially injured survivor, or having an ally helping you heal someone can all make activating this perk harder than it seems. While Second Wind offers a strong and versatile benefit, meeting its healing requirement can be a challenge. So I'll be placing it in the B tier. Now let's focus on Fixated. This increases your walking speed by 20% while healthy and allows you to see your own scratch marks. It's a nice pick for a stealthy playstyle as it allows you to take cover and reposition yourself faster. Being able to see your own scratch marks also makes pulling off jukes easier. However, becoming injured deactivates the biggest benefit this perk offers, which can happen frequently against kills like Plague, Legion, and Wraith. And experienced players will have a good sense of how long their scratch marks last even without this perk. So while fixated can help you stay more stealthy, extra walking speed isn't exactly game breaking, especially when it can be deactivated by getting injured. So I'll be ranking it in the C tier. And our final perk is... Aww. Left Behind. This reveals the ore of the hatch when you're the last survivor remaining. Oftentimes, having this perk equipped results in a guaranteed win if you manage to outlive your team. And if you have a key equipped, you'll be able to escape even if the killer finds the hatch before you do. The problem with this perk though is how challenging it is to activate. Either everyone except you has to die, or everyone except you has to escape. Either way, you'll be playing the entire match with only 3 perks until one of these two scenarios happens. So even though Left Behind can guarantee an escape, you'll have to live the whole match using a key and only 3 perks. Left Behind may let you have more key moments at the end of the game, but that won't be enough to convince me to put it anywhere but the C tier. So that's a wrap for this tier list. I know some of you won't agree with all my rankings, and that's fine. I encourage all of you to critically think about each perk rather than take my word or anyone else's word for it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And finally, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe for future content.